Um, one of the things that we thought would be um, compelling following the, the powerful conversation by Ursula is to translate that now into the experience of an individual every single day who are doing this kind of tweak work that um, Ursula spoke of. And so I want to introduce to you three um, individuals that I have just been delighted to get to know. They are from Miami, they're from uh, Boston, they're from New York, and um, they all are doing things that I might suggest are slightly different than your history. But they have some interesting, I think, insights into why it works. And so I'd first like to introduce Bill Doolin. Um, Bill has an NSW from Hunter College, and um, he's a social worker at heart. Just spend three minutes with him, and you know that. But he's got an incredible history as a city commissioner for um, human rights for 10 years, and did a lot of work on neighborhood stabilization in that um, position. He spent 23 years as the CEO of Jacob Reef Settlement, and he brought that from a $75,000 organization with about five employees to a $3 million organization with over 100 employees. And Bill's just got a, a, a heart for the work that he's doing, and I think you'll really enjoy um, listening to him. And then we have Debbie, and um, Debbie earned her master's in public administration um, with a concentration in nonprofit management. I didn't know that they had that concentration, and that's great. And she has 26 years in that for profit sector, and then has a variety of experiences in volunteer work in the government sector. And um, throughout the entire um, preparation for our panel, Debbie would say things and I would go, oh, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to steal that. That's a really great statement. I think you'll enjoy listening to Debbie. And then we have Virginia. Virginia has a diverse background in both the for-profit as well as the not-for-profit sector. She's got tremendous experience in human resources, um, in planning all the different kinds of special events. She has experiences in mentoring students and also in researching Medicare issues. And so. I would like you to um, just join me in welcoming our panel, and, and we will begin. Um, so my first question to you, and I think it just ties so perfectly to Ursula's comments, is why do we serve? What was it that caused it to um, touch a piece of your soul that you wanted to spend as much time as you are spending in research? myself and uh, at the organization we had hired reservists and when I was leaving the one the reservists said Bill have you thought about working with reservists I said no but I will Nesta Nesta still there uh, at Jacob Reese and then I saw this opportunity on an opportunity board uh, for this new program called Prep Now I said oh it's new I know nothing about the foster care system <laughs> and working with foster parents. Um, and it didn't appear to have those same stresses that I had at Jacob Reese. But it had an opportunity for me to learn. And also to be in an environment 
to help people create a change in their life, and that's important to me, and so that's why we do it. Great, great, Joe, well, thank you. How about you, Deb? It's on, just speak right close to me. I feel miserably retired, and um, my husband is also retired, and our house got very much smaller when we were both at home, and I realized that, you know, I still had something to offer, and checking out Reserve was, and I'm only for me, it really enabled, it was a, it was a win-win for everybody. The, the nonprofit organizations could take advantage of a professional who had accumulated a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom, and, uh, and, and very specific skill sets for not a lot of money. And as a fundraiser, I know what it's like for nonprofits to have to make hard decisions around how they allocate their dollars. And this has been uh, a rebirth for me, and it, uh, it sure as heck beats shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a quote, it sure as heck beats shopping. I'm gonna take that one. So um, I'm gonna build on Ursula's comments for a moment and ask you a question that we hadn't talked about. Um, we had talked about, and I, I do want you to speak to the skill sets and the experiences inherent in your reserve work, but what do you think have been your stretch experiences? What do you think is, you've had to tweak um, and it's been very new to you and um, it's, it's been, I think you said, a little bit out of the comfort zone. What has your experience, any one of um, your experiences tweaked within you? Yeah, so yeah. Um, in my years of work, I was fortunate enough to work with organizations whose missions aligned with my personal code and ethics. And I find that with Reserve, I'm able to continue to do that. However, the populations of people that I'm working with now are very different. I'm working with people who um, really have no voice. Uh, they come from uh, low-income neighborhoods, they are educated, and for me to hear their story and to understand their world has been, I have to admit, a bit of a challenge, and it's been one of the best educational opportunities I've had in the service. That's great. Thank you. So, Virginia, what do you think is tweaked? Um, moving into a new, new environment, I knew that I had to learn more about the world of foster care um, in order to be of any help to anyone. Um, and it was stepping back and just peeling all the layers off of what I may have thought I knew and saying, okay, let me rebuild uh, this pyramid, so to speak, in terms of what I need to know not what I thought I knew, but what I need to know in order to be of help uh, to the participants of the PrEP Now program. So for you, it was really new intellectual information. Yeah. Um, Deb, what I heard you say is there might have been setting aside, was there any value conflicts that you had, that you bumped into, that you had to work through, or, or Bill, were there any of that for you? I think for me, Disassembling some preconceived notions. I thought you were saying. And um, that was a healthy step for me. Wow, great. Thank you. Virginia, yeah. thoughts about this, please. <coughs> well, I didn't have to tweak anything. Because of my human resources background and as a trained, shy liaison, I, I believe those experiences really enhance what I am doing as a reservist yeah. in mentoring the students. Great, thank you. Bill, how about any tweaking or any any stretching in terms of those values or um, even just cognitively? I, no, I, I don't think so in, in that sense. I, I think the, one of the things that actually where I had to become uh, Adjust, and it was a big uh, adjustment. Um, as a CEO, I was alone most of the time. 
I was in my office alone, and the conversation always changed when you walk out your office. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but now I'm in this environment, and I have to understand what this environment is, and also working as a partner with individuals, um, because now I'm out here. And, but you know, it's, it's a fascinating world, just listening to the interplay of what goes on, I find it fascinating. But just, I really felt that I had to really just change all the things I've been a part of for so many years. Wow. Thank you. So, one thing that struck me as Ursula was speaking, and, and it built on what we were talking about when we were preparing um, for our conversation, is that you are, um, in many ways, ambassadors to other um, individuals who may be looking for something to do at this stage of their life, this encore career. And I'm wondering if you could provide some comments that you say to other individuals, and, and even are um, passionate about saying, even in public forums, that really describe the way in which research and the experience has impacted your life. I mean, first of all, where else could I go to make ten dollars an hour? <laughs> fascinating, fascinating. I, mean, um, I, 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 I can't beat that. I can't beat that. Um, <laughs> uh, reserve has allowed me to continue that journey on life uh, because life is a journey. It does not stop. Um, and I'll go back to one of the slides. I want those little yellow dots to keep moving around. <laughs> you know, I don't know where they're going, but I want the people. And it's, it's allowed me to take my experiences um, and organizational, strategic, and use in a forum that um, is continuing what I believe in is being a change agent. And yes, I could have become a consultant, and, uh, but you know, that's not gonna change anything except maybe some money in my pocket. Uh, but the reserve has been, it gives you a routine also, which is important. I look to be there. I look to interact. I look to do these things to continue to learn and, and grow because it does not stop, and at least I do not want it to stop. Um, it's the journey, and there's a lot of more things that I'm going to look forward to in this journey, and now it's providing that, Great. and so many new things. Great. For folks in the room who aren't aware, when Bill references the program Prep Now, he's referencing um, one of our signature programs that really does try to create um, a college-going culture inside of foster homes. So in New York City, and we really hope this moves around the country, We'll be working soon with 400 foster parents really trying to create a college-going culture. And so it's never happened before. So not only is it um, new in New York City and uh, hopefully across the world, but Bill's talking about it as being new. It's just flat out, you're, you're carving the pathway for it. And that's so appreciative. Um, Dad, Virginia.
one of the things that I think um, causes us to continue to get up and do whatever we do every day is that it, it, there's a lot of benefits, but somehow it touches something in me, and, it, and it, it's something I want and need. And so I'm wondering if you could talk about one moment um, where whatever might have been going on that day, that's what keeps you coming back to reserve. Has there been one moment of impact um, that you know will stick with you for a very long time? Anyone? Not bad. <laughs> Uh, was sitting in the office and uh, we were uh, preparing the monthly report. And one of the success methods, these are reservists who work directly with the foster parent, uh, sent an email and I opened the email and it says, Bill, one of the youth in care from one of the homes in Workwood has just got a full ride to Sarah Lawrence. Wow. I said, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. The work we do every day, sometimes you can say, no, it's not a bright life thing, but when you get that end result, that outcome there, that says, okay, this is why I have to come back. It recharges your battery. Great, thank you. Virginia, yes. Yeah. My uh, first opportunity was as was working with the college counselor um, at one of the high schools. And I was assisting a young gentleman who student who wanted to go to FIU. And we were doing all the college essays and the, all the applications. And then I met him in Walmart. And he came to me and he hugged me and he said, thank you, I got into FIU. and your talents as a professional and 
leverage them in um, not-for-profit agencies. And sometimes that looks like, as a CEO, you have leadership skills. You could have run a strategic plan, or you could have run a leadership um, organization, or an entity, or some sort of a process. And um, Virginia, you could have done a lot of work in HR, and Deb, you could have lot, done a lot of work in marketing. And I think you've probably done all of that. But every one of the examples that you highlighted where that is impacting the life of a young person. And I'm intrigued by that, and I just wanted to have you talk about that a little bit. When I looked at the um, uh, position on the Opportunity Board, uh, I was trying to figure out, okay, what's going to be the impact that I can walk away and, and, and understand that I have made some difference. Um, and that was very important to me that I have made a difference, that I'm just not on a treadmill just turning time every day, but that at the end of the day, it is a difference. And so uh, once I got into it, the expectation was fully met mm -hmm. and it was there every day. I, I hope I'm responding you to are. it. You are. Great. Thank you. Jeff, Virginia? I love the work that I do with Liz Mom and Kate Greer because basically building connections with people. And so I was excited that the serve would give me the opportunity to continue to build connections and, as Bill said, to do meaningful work and to add value to an organization. And um, <coughs> it was challenging in that the connections that I am building based on things that really um, encourage me to reach beyond my comfort zone and to, um, and to really put myself in someone else's position and try and understand their story because the work that we all do in nonprofits is really about storytelling and people we meet. Yes, about the storytelling mm -hmm. and the people we meet. Thank you. So I had a high regard for the organization, 
And just to add a, a little bit of history, um, I remember I used to work with um, the ex school corporation, uh, Lucy Friedman. And she had asked me when the reserve was being put together, Bill, would you sit in on a panel with her, Stern, and some of And I said, yeah. And so it was almost full circle wow. that uh, I came. And so it was more, it was something that I said, hey, maybe I can do, continue to do good. And so that's the why those parts of, of history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phyllis. Betsy. Yes. Um, all of you panelists are very impressive, and in a way you make it seem easy to do the impressive things that you do. But do you ever have friends who say, you know, well, of course you could walk in and do this, but I'm not, you know, I'm not that kind of a person. Uh, so how did Reserve help you get started and kind of support you in really doing something that's quite new and different? Great, thanks. Or are you? <laughs> <laughs> Our own reservists like you. Many of my friends have gone down this path, mm -hmm. and I have recommended this path to other people because here in Boston, the reserve team professionals uh, are, in fact, just that very professional, very supportive, very much an advocate of the organization and the individual. Mm -hmm. And it's all about um, everybody benefiting. And they have been very strategic in the way that they have um, explained different opportunities. So that, like Bill, I was hoping I would be selected for the program. I did not take it as an automatic, oh yeah, you're in, just because you've done this for so long. Uh, but it is the vetting process also for the positions. And, I feel very comfortable suggesting people look into this program because of the level of professionalism of the team here in Boston. Mm -hmm. Great, what a compliment. Please, we're okay, thank you. And then I'll get to Mark, thank you. I think I have to follow up with the last question. Um, not only, uh, I know at least with Bill, that not only do you work around with Prep now, but you're involved in coordinating other reserves. And so in that experience, what kinds of things have you observed in terms of the skill levels, in terms of the continued growth um, of individuals who have come together? And if the others of you have been coordinating or interacting with other reservists in your, in your programs, what are some of the things that you observe? The kind of skills they come with and the kind of growth? Yeah, great. Interesting question. Um, I think that uh, reserve uh, attracts a lot of good individuals who bring a lot of good experiences to the table. Um, while in the last six months, while I've been working with Prep Now, um, I have worked with this 15 assessment that's in the program, um, and I have seen them do some fantastic things that um, uh, I would say to myself, boy, could I do that? They go on into the field and working with people one on one on a regular basis and working with individuals where there's a lot going on in their lives. And not only are they bringing something, they're getting something back. So uh, working with the other reservists has been a, a blessing. It's been very good because they just bring a lot of talents and I learn from them also. Okay, Mark, Mark has another question. Uh, you mentioned a, a variety of reasons of what attracts you to reserve and what's kept you engaged. Um, nobody's mentioned, well, Bill did mention the $10, but nobody's <laughs> mentioned the, the money aspect of it. What, what, from your perspective, how important is it for reservists to receive a stipend? It is very important. Why? It is very important because, um, well, there's two reasons. Of course, the, the original concept was 
to give back. And then, um, so the $10 was what was designed to the stipend for the reserve. Um, but in today's world, in the economy we are living in, we have to be realistic. A lot of reservists who have not been fortunate enough, like myself, to work in a Fortune 500 company do not have a retirement plan. And that $10, if you're working 25 to 30 hours a week, we get paid every two weeks, so on a monthly basis, you're probably getting at least $800. Mm -hmm. So that $800 can really supplement your income for those people who are only living on Social Security without any pension plan or 401k coming in. So it really is quite a help for those people. It offsets <coughs> their uh, savings. They don't have to touch the savings. And um, I think it's really very important because we have to be realistic. A lot of people, retired people, are only living on Social Security. Thank you, Regina. Um, my ten dollars an hour doesn't even cover the tolls that I incur when I go to my placement. So I'm really doing it because it's such a marvelous opportunity for me to stay at wage. But what we know about our country is that paid work is very much valued. And I think that for an organization to know that they have made a monetary commitment they probably see us slightly differently than they do volunteers who maybe believe in the mission. Uh, yes, it's, it's um, affirming to, to still be able to earn some money, but I think it is, to me, important for reserve because of the value that society places on paid employment and the fact that the organizations are making an investment in the reservists and uh, it feels more like a partnership, more, you know, what can people put it? Thank you. Yeah. So, so this, it's, it's a value proposition to, to me in terms of you're saying you value what I bring and I'm saying this is what I'm gonna charge you for. And I can make, say whatever that charge is and per, I mean, uh, reserve, I mean, for now, uh, says, hey Bill, Here's, we value you, but this is what we're putting on the table. It's like, good. <coughs> and this is what I'm going to bring to the table. And now we have this partnership that uh, is moving moving forward. And that's an important thing to me in terms of this partnership here. Thanks for asking that question, Mark, because I know um, Mark is from Memphis, and Mark is thinking about the establishment of a reserve affiliate. And that's part of your contemplation about the model. So I really appreciate it. Um, the directness of that question. Any other final questions before we end our panel this morning? Okay, so thank you well, so much. Well, is there anything that they think that we need to do differently to attract people of their caliber and to retain them? Thanks, Anne. Great question. Anything that reserve needs to do differently? Well, I will speak uh, living in Miami. A lot of our reservists are asking about mileage reimbursement. We do, in Miami, we really travel quite a bit. So um, they are asking if there is a possibility for mileage reimbursement. And I think that would be an added feature because it's almost a wear and tear on the vehicle. But um, especially in education, a lot of our reservists would travel very far for an educational opportunity. And they have presented that question if there could be some mileage reimbursement. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Do you have anything? So please join me in thanking our panelists.